Oh, my pretty. Oh, my pretty. <laughs> Hi, that ball guy. And if I seem just a little bit of excited, yeah, it's probably because I am. Uh, inside the box that you saw me take out of the envelope just mere moments before, but to me it was days ago, uh, is this Western Digital 2 terabyte NVMe drive. This thing, <laughs> we're just gonna say I'm pretty excited. Uh, what I have currently is a combination of things. I've got an Intel 665P, which is my boot drive. It's a one terabyte, it's not big enough to put a bunch of my games on, or say videos when I'm doing YouTube, but this could be. Now, originally what I was gonna do is I was gonna go ahead and just update. I was gonna swap out and clone the Intel onto this one and call it a day. And then I got to thinking, hmm, maybe this would be a really, really good game drive. And then I could also put a scratch folder on there when I'm doing videos for YouTube or Odyssey or whatever I might be doing. Um, even if I'm, you know, just doing small files or small changes, ignore that. If I'm doing small files or small changes, um, this would come in very, very handy and be anywhere from six to 10 times faster than the six terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive that I'm using. So um, we're gonna take a look at a couple things and I'll tell you exactly why I'm picking this puppy right here. So we'll start you out by looking at the Intel drive. The Intel is a QLC, which is a little bit less expensive than some of your other drives, but it is a little bit slower in some cases. Now the sequential read and sequential write can be a little bit slower than a TLC type drive. But as you might find out in other, say the random reads and writes and all, it is just as fast or faster in some cases, especially with a smaller buffer load. Uh, there are ways of taking care of that with more expensive QLC drives, but you know, at that point, uh, you, you get expensive enough for large enough uh, capacities that you might even just better off buying, you know, really either one of them. But in this case, the Intel 665, it's a one terabyte drive, does a great job. The sequentials are about 1875 megabytes per second. Um, the sequential reads are about 19 and 1950 or 19, somewhere in that area. And it'll go down to the randoms being in the mid fives. So that is pretty solid in itself. The, uh, the SanDisk, which was the old boot drive in my old computer and now is a file drive that I'm taking things off of for this computer because I couldn't turn it into the boot drive on this one, gets sequential reads and writes that are almost twice as high as the Intel, but they fall behind in the other areas. So all the random writes and all of the random reads and all that stuff are much, they're not much, much lower, but they are lower. So you can see it's age a little bit. It's not quite as fast as some of the other drives are. And in this case, the Intel is definitely gonna stay my boot drive for this reason. Now, the reason why I'm going to the two terabyte drive is because if I go to the hard drive, the Western Digital regular hard drive, those are quite a bit worse. We're talking about 200 megabytes for a sequential read or write. And we're talking about two, maybe two and a half for random read and write. So, well, random read would be about two and a half. Random write would be about five. Still, we're talking about something that goes from the neighborhood of 500 megabytes per second down to something that goes down to two megabytes per second. That's a huge difference. And when you're processing information back and forth or you're pulling files off of something, getting anywhere from six to 200 times the speed, that's gonna make a significant difference. So you can see where when somebody tells you you need to put your boot drive, your operating system on an SSD or specifically an NVMe drive, the huge difference between the other two, the first two that I showed you and the hard drive, we're talking night and day. So if you're going something that it's anywhere from, you know, six to 10 times faster to up to 200 times faster, Imagine what that's going to do when you're trying to load up your computer when you know the first time you come in and turn it on in the morning. You can't. You might be able to get the word coffee with co with cream and sugar out of your mouth instead of having to go up, turn the coffee pot on, go get the coffee, put this, you know, let it brew, get the sugar, get the cream, come back and wait for the rest of it to load. So after swapping everything out and putting the new WD Black NVMe in there along with the Intel, 
we take a look at that one and you can see that it is very much quicker than the Intel as far as sequential read and write and it goes blow to blow with it for the rest of the rest of the, the categories that were beating the old uh, SanDisk drive. And you were thinking, well, the SanDisk drive worked pretty well. Why didn't you just use that? Well, there was two problems. Uh, the first problem was I'm still using it. Actually, there's we're going to make that three problems. Uh, the, the first problem was I'm, I'm still going to be using it for another build. The second problem was it's only one terabyte and I need more room. And the third problem is I kind of did get another SanDisk because uh, whether you know this or not, SanDisk was bought a couple of years ago by Western Digital. So basically what I've done is I bought this year's model of that same Extreme Pro NVMe drive. And this is the result of it. So you can see it's a very, very strong drive, does a very good job. And I'm looking forward to changing everything over to all my Steam games. And I'm probably going to move my Epic games and my, um, my other Origin games, the EA games over there as well. And for those of you thinking, oh, that's going to be a lot of a, a big pain in the butt trying to get all those moved over, not really so much because I'm, uh, I've already done a couple tutorials on that. So I'm going to leave those linked up here for all the YouTube folks. The folks on Odyssey are just going to have to look down in the description. But uh, I'll leave the link to the tutorial for the Steam process of moving all your files over for that and for the process of moving all of your Origin EA games and your Epic games to make that pretty simple. So if I do decide to do that, I'm probably just going to move the Steam games. But if I decided to move all three, I could just go back to my previous notes for those two videos and I'd be all set. So once again, uh, if you're thinking, even thinking remotely about doing anything, upgrading your, uh, just a simple upgrade to make your computer faster, and you don't already have your operating system on an SSD, you can see pure numbers, why it's so much easier to do. I'm talking about you're anywhere from six to 200 times the speed of loading, reading, and writing, and that's doing, that's going to do nothing but help you out. So anyway, folks, that's all I got for this time. I just wanted to kind of show you guys that as I was going through it, and uh, you're welcome to do all those internet things, all those YouTube things, you know, that like, uh, dislike if you have to, but let me know why. Leave me any kind of comments. What are you thinking about doing, or what have you done recently on your build? And uh, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're still trying to go after 200, so I'm, I'm really, really pu pushing. I'm going to mention it every single time. So until next time, I'll see you later.